hopefully you guys can see this is this is water this distributor was a major pain in my backside but ta-da all right we got the old one off well what's what's left of the old one anyway the moment has come for us to take the uh amc ambassador on a test drive <laughs> What a boat, man. The car is doing fine, but I just, I don't trust the gas tank. I think I've done just about everything I can do, but at least you got, oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, she's out of gas. She's out of gas. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we've got a lot on our plate. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get everything done in this video that I would like to, but there are a few things I want to do in this video. One of them is taking the AMC Ambassador out on its first real drive. I want to get it out on the road, get it up to speed, see how it shifts, all of that good stuff uh, on its own gas tank, which should make things really interesting. We also have to put the taillight in the Saturn LW1. We got to basically clean that car up and send it down to Weird Beard. We've also got to put the control arm on the Chrysler Pacifica and get that down to Weird Beard. So that's a lot to try to get done when it's already the afternoon. So I am definitely running behind, probably overextended. But before we get into it, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Jeremy from Saskatchewan for these pictures. This is this is phenomenal photography right here, guys. Absolutely amazing. Really cool that you've been watching my videos for like ever and that you took the time to take these photographs and send them to me. They are literally spectacular photos. Yes, I'm going to frame these and put these up either in my office or in the shop. So as you can see, the AMC has made it to my front yard. Uh, that's a pretty big feat for a car that's been sitting for 14 years, guys. It drove from my shop to the front yard. Now I wanna know, can it drive on the road? But before we get into that, I had a small issue with the Jeep, just a tiny issue with the Jeep that we just ran into a big spider web. Okay, uh, I'm gonna see what what's going on in here, but yeah, yeah, it's it's there. So I've gotta I gotta figure this out. Um, Hopefully, you guys can see this is this is water. Yeah. Um, Ever since I got the light bar installed, when I would go through a car wash, there would be a small, not nearly this much, but a small bit of water that would come through the firewall and all over my feet. So I took it back to four wheel parts and I asked them uh, if they could fix that. And the issue is I can't show you really because it's way up under here and it's gonna be dark, but well, maybe I can, I don't know. Way up under there, right? somewhere up there this wire right here uh that wire right in the center of your screen they ran it through the firewall which is perfectly fine perfectly normal um that that is where the clutch pedal for the jeep would have been if it was a standard transmission so they opted which makes perfect sense i used to be an installer that's something a lot of you don't know i used to install two-way radios for oklahoma two-way co uh, company been out of business a long time. The owner's name was Bill Waller. It's now called uh, Percom, I think, or yeah, I think it's called Percom now in Oklahoma City. But anyway, uh, I used to install two-way radios. So the proper way to run this wire, if you have an existing hole that you can use, that is absolutely perfect. What's not perfect is they did not put a grommet in it. What they had done is they literally pulled out the cap from the factory and they just stuck a wire in it and left it wide open to the elements. Well, that's not the proper way of doing it, but you know, I took it back and they said that they shoved a bunch of tar, some kind of tar stuff in there to seal it up. Well, went back to the car wash and again, we had less water, but water would still drip. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna deal with it because I don't have time to take it back again. And then we had the ice storm and rain for days. And my floor is now full of water. So four wheel parts, if you guys are watching, uh, it would be great if we could get this issue resolved properly once and for all. See, if I was the installer, I would have used a grommet, proper size for the hole in the firewall, 
and proper size to snug the wire through there. And I think the reason they opted not to do that uh, was number one, they didn't think it was gonna uh, it was gonna let any water intrude into the cab. Apparently, something either with the 2020s or this latest generation of Jeep uh, is allowing water to get in that area, which is why the factory had it plugged off to begin with. Well, they carved out the plug and stuck a wire in there. And apparently throwing tar at it wasn't the proper way to do it either. For me, uh, I would have put a grommet in there. I understand why they didn't. It's a lot more work. To put a grommet in there means that you have to unwire the accessory that you installed, right? You can't just throw a grommet in there. You have to literally disconnect the wiring and run the wiring through the grommet, which is time consuming. And they've already done this, so they're on to the next one. Uh, I, 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 I'm hesitant to say that it was a lazy job, but that's really what it appears uh, to be to me from my perspective. And now that my brand new 2020 Jeep has a floor full of water, uh, let's just say I'm less than satisfied at this point. Now that we got that tidbit out of the way, let's talk about the MG, I almost called it a midget, the MGB. I did a thing the other day, guys. This will be coming up in a future video. But uh, the reason I'm running so far behind today is because I slept in. And I slept in because I worked on this from about 11.30 in the afternoon yesterday, uh, literally until about 1 o'clock in the morning, trying to get this distributor out. This distributor was a major pain in my backside. But, ta-da! She's free. I'm just gonna leave it sitting there uh, for effect for the, <laughs> for the next video on this car and be like, look, we got it out. And some of you uh, probably won't see that video or some are gonna miss this video and they'll have no clue. But anyway, yeah, strictly for effect. We did get the distributor out, which means the new distributor will be in any day now. We will put the electronic ignition in this and this thing is gonna be going down the road. I am super excited about that. Let's turn that light off. Here we have the 2000 Saturn LW1. I think it is beautiful. It does need a wash. We need to clean up the tires. But aside from that, this car is pretty much ready to go, guys. It'll fire up whenever you want it to. I went ahead and took care of the door. Remember before the door would uh, the door would catch right here? I put a, uh, a clip. It's just a clip that was missing. I put a clip in there and no problem at all. It does kind of pop when you open it. Uh, yeah, that is what it is. All I'm gonna do to this car is wash it, give it a quick wipe down, vacuum it out because obviously it needs, it needs a vacuum. Uh, maybe throw some tire shine on it and put a tail light in it. We have the tail light on the desk. Let's go ahead and start with that right now and knock this portion out. I cleaned out the back. It's not a particularly pretty car it really needs a steam clean guys i don't have a steam cleaner and the last time i tried to clean something with brushes and chemicals i think i actually made it worse and that was on the uh 2010 what was that uh i don't even remember what it was uh, mitsubishi lancer so i'm not i'm not i'm just gonna vacuum it i'm gonna vacuum it and we're gonna send it and see if we can turn it into some money there's a few bolts back here i think like one two three you can't see anything but i'm gonna go ahead and pop those out Slap that new light on and see what she looks like. All right, so thanks to some help from my fiance, the interior is clean and we're getting ready to work on the uh, Chrysler Pacifica. It is not perfect. It's never gonna be perfect. I don't know, I say that on almost every video, guys. The, these cars are not perfect cars. You know what I mean? These are, these are old cars that I found. These are A to B cars. Some of them are actually really good cars, but none of them regardless of how good they are, are gonna be perfect, none of them. So I think it cleaned up pretty nicely. We are getting ready to uh, give it a bath. And normally that's something I would time lapse. How's that tail light look? How's that look? Does that look nice? Yeah, all the lights work. It's time to, uh, it's time to clean it up, get the wheels clean. Look how dirty they are. And they're actually some pretty decent looking wheels too. So time to get her cleaned up, washed, and then this one will be ready to head down to Weird Beard. Well, one down, one more to go as far as getting it ready for Weird Beard. What do you think, guys? I think she came out looking pretty dang good. 
considering where it came from when we got it. She's clean. It runs and drives perfect. It's got good tires. The interior is clean. Cold air, hot heat, no warning lights on the dash, no leaks either. I think this one's ready to go down the road. Next, it's time to focus on this rear wheel on the 2007 Chrysler Pacific. As you can see right here, boy, she is, uh, that ain't right. <laughs> that ain't right. Not at all. Very simple fix. I got the part, it was less than $50, so let's jack it up, get it replaced, and then we can give this one a cleaning, and off it goes. All right, we got the old one off. Well, what's, what's left is the old one anyway. And this is the shiny new piece that's gonna go on. This is, honestly guys, probably the easiest fix I have done, well, I don't wanna say ever, but probably the easiest fix I've done in a very, very long time. So this piece attaches right here like this. The other piece attaches up there into that bracket. And literally that's, that's it guys, that's it. I would show you more, but literally this is stupid simple. And just like that, she's done. All right. You know what that means? Time to put the tire on and give her a bath. Well, as you can see, it's getting dark. And while we got a lot accomplished today, the Pacifica is not done. I forgot that you and I haven't even taken it on a test drive yet. Totally forgot. Like, <laughs> don't ask me how that slipped my mind, but it totally slipped my mind that we have not even test driven this yet. So I took it on its first test drive and it needs an alignment. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in such a hurry today, guys. And everybody knows when you're in a hurry, that's, that's when mistakes happen. It is. Uh, thankfully, I think a alignment on the Pacifica will do it wonders. And I think it'll be just fine once she gets that alignment done, guys. So before we lose too much daylight, I think, boy, these, these are actually really nice looking cars, guys. They, they clean up so well. They really do. And again, I gotta give a big shout out and thank you to my fiance for uh, the day. I, don't you hate those locking doors, the auto lock thing? Uh, again, big shout out to Jessica for coming out here and giving me a hand. I'm running so far behind today. I know you can't hardly see, but there's your third row seats. I'm gonna just leave that. I'm not even messing with it. But I think the moment has come for us to take the uh, AMC Ambassador on a test drive because it is getting late and I want to know for sure if we're gonna be able to get this thing driving under its own power down the road. Man, I'm excited. The one thing I don't have is the keys, so let me go grab them and let's finish this video off right. So this is going to be a real cold start. And I can tell you right now, this car does not like cold starts at all. She's very, very temperamental. So. Well, it's actually running. Usually it dies. It, it doesn't like being cold, guys. She's very temperamental. And it's not even cold outside. It's like 55 degrees yeah here she goes here she goes she's gonna die come on come on just just die there you go and you let it sit for a minute a couple more pumps she's not happy but she'll 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 go see there it is she'll smoke a little bit there she goes. Let's roll this window down. Woo, she's rich. That's what it is. It's running way too rich when you first start it. Those uh, adjustment screws, fuel mixture screws need to be changed out or <laughs> changed out, need to be adjusted. Look at her, guys. I can't believe it's running on its own. Now, don't get too crazy about my handiwork. 
all right it's not the best this is all just kind of temporarily rigged up just so i could get it down the road for this video i want to know i want to know so i've got an electric fuel pump somewhere down there i've got a ground wire run here a positive wire run over there to the ignition side of the uh, starter solenoid we've got the fuel line held up with a uh, wire tied because <laughs> i'm out of zip ties i have no zip ties the regulator is set to four psi we got our fuel filter and then it's tied up again right here and it runs over to that beautiful beautiful holly carburetor as you can see she's starting to uh she's starting to run pretty good and it is running on its own gas tank granted it has about six gallons of fresh fuel in it but it's running on its own gas tank and that's a huge huge deal for this $2,500 1967 AMC Ambassador 990 that had been parked for 14 years now I know a lot of you want to see me go further with it you want to see us do more to it most of you I think are really wanting to see this top get replaced I don't know if we're gonna do that guys I, I really don't as you can see there's no rust it's not rusted in the slightest um, it's just deteriorated from time so I don't think I'm gonna go that far with it guys I don't but I will consider it this car is going to cost a small fortune I have a lot of other cars a lot of other things going on in my life I'm still trying to get a lift I'm trying to get my driveway paved I'm trying to get the shop approach paved. So, you know, I don't I don't take out loans for this stuff, guys. This is all I pay for all of this out of my own money. So this isn't a thing of like, hey, I can just go borrow money. I'm 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 trying to do this all on my own, and it can be very difficult. So comment below what you think. I'm tempted to send this thing down the road for four grand. Uh, this is not one that I'll send a weird beard. I'm gonna sell this one myself. Uh, I think four grand now that it's running and driving I think it's a good deal well I say driving I say driving forgive me it has now driven around the yard once and from my shop to the driveway oh she's still there we go come on that alternator light kind of comes and goes if you're wondering what this light is right here that's the alternator light it kind of comes and go, goes as it pleases. Let me see if I can get out of here without running into anything or anyone. Brake check. Yes, the brakes are still working. That's a positive. All right. Here we go, guys. Are you ready? Brake check. One, two, one, two. Here we go. I'm gonna be ginger with her. Oh, wow. Let's see if we can get you in on that speedometer. Probably can't see it. We're going 40, 45, 50, 55. 60 mile an hour. I think I'm going to uh, slow it down. I'm going to pull off and get out of these cars way. Let me just gingerly pull off the road here. We'll get back on here in just a second, but I'm not going to be cruising 60 miles an hour this whole time, guys. So check for traffic. We're good. I don't want to go too far. <laughs> what a boat, man. <laughs> what a tank. This is wild. Okay, I feel uncomfortable. The car is doing fine, but I just, I don't trust the gas tank. So I, I think I want to, I think I want to turn around 
and head back. Wow, I cannot believe that we're able to cruise 55, 60 miles an hour in this car after 14 years of sitting. That is, uh, honestly, that's a testament. Testament, testament. It's a testament to the quality of the engineering from back in the day. It truly is. All right, guys, I'm gonna find a place to pull over and turn around, and then we're gonna make the journey back. There was a perfect spot right there. Dang it. We'll make a journey back to the house. All right, I found us a nice little spot to turn around. We've got a really pretty sunset out here. This is October 30th, guys. Tomorrow's Halloween. I don't know if I'm gonna have a video for you on Saturday, to be honest with you. Uh, I think I've done just about everything I can do, but at least you got, oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This hill is treacherous. I may have run out of gas. I, I'm not sure. I thought I put five to six gallons in, but now that I'm thinking about it, I might not have. Oh, come on, old girl. The goal, oh, oh, yep, she's out of gas. She's out of gas. She's out of gas. Come on, so now we gotta just speed. We're going 60, 65, 70. We are going 70. Wow. Oh, you can't see it, but we are literally going 70 miles an hour right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to get home, man. Oh my goodness. I cannot die on the side of this road. Woo! I, we're going 70. And the speed limit drops, which means we're coming back into town. Yep, speed limit drops to 55. We're going 60. Oh, man. Well, it's getting dark on us, guys. So, uh, sorry the battery died. Not only did I think the car was running out of gas, but the battery in my GoPro literally died at about the same time. So, uh, forgive me. I know it's dark, but she made it home. She's still running. And I know the video quality is going to suck because of how dark it's getting out here but take a look can we get in on that sunset there i guess the gopro is not the best for like trying to show people specific things it just shows a whole picture anyway she made it i'm not sure if it ran out of gas or if it was having some fuel issues uh you can't see anything okay i'm not going to keep you out here in the dark if you can't see i just wanted to make sure you could see that it did make it back to the house and it's still running so it's about 6 30 at night hey roxy baby i was worried about you are you okay come here sweetheart i was so worried about you i was um guys you know how it is in the country but uh well little roxy's like family to us we don't own her well nobody owns her i think she she's a <laughs> she's a free dog she just does whatever she wants, don't you? Now you're going to go check out my backyard. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, earlier while I was washing the Pacifica, we heard a loud gunshot. And the gunshot was immediately followed by a dog screaming in agony and pain. And immediately after that followed another gunshot, at which point the dog was no longer making any noise at all. So... Um, I grew up in the country a lot. I mean, I grew up in the city and I grew up in the country. It's complicated, but I've grown up, I've grown up just about everywhere, guys. I've grown up in a middle-class suburbs. I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the country. So I've had a, uh, a life's worth of experience. And that's why I really enjoy all people and kind of dislike all people at the same time time uh yeah so i had a very colorful upbringing guys and uh part of that upbringing was having to put down one of our dogs i didn't do it myself my stepmom did but i was with her when she did it 
It was a dog that we had raised from a puppy that uh, we gave away. Uh, the neighbors that we gave it to uh, apparently abused it. And then it came back to us, uh, found us down the street, and started killing and eating our animals. And then my stepmom ended up having to go out and, and put her down. So I remember, I remember the sounds all too well all too well and and i don't know the circumstances around whatever happened to that dog i just know that uh i hate i hate things like that i just do i just do anyway um i'm glad roxy's okay i've been very concerned about her all day but it looks like she's fine so we accomplished quite a bit today and there's more to come obviously we've got the uh i forgot what it's called the the <laughs> I'm, I'm tired i am so exhausted right now and i still have to edit this video but uh We've got the MGB. I got parts coming that should be here Tuesday, hopefully Tuesday. So I'm fingers crossed Tuesday-ish we can get the MGB on the road. And I can do that eventual drive to Copart that I've been waiting to do. Um, the Pacifica will definitely need an alignment. So I'm, hopefully, I'm hoping that I can find somebody that can align it for me tomorrow, which is Saturday. Good luck. Everybody's probably going to be super busy and booked, but I'm going to try it because I want to get it down to Weird Beard for sale. The Pacifica is pretty much done. It really just lacks an alignment. Once the alignment's done, that thing will be ready to go. The Saturn, I'm going to work on taking over to Weird Beard right now. I'm waiting on his response. So as soon as he gets back to me and says, come on with it, I'm going to bring the Saturn down there to him. We already know it'll make it because it literally made it from the city 60 miles down here with no issue. So the Saturn is good to go. The AMC, though, man, I'm so torn on what to do to that car. I would love to keep it and spend a bunch of money, you know, putting it back together. It really doesn't lack much to be drivable. The gas tank needs cleaned out. I got a new sending unit for it today, and the gas tank needs patched. Aside from that, like, and shocks, desperately need shocks. Uh, aside from that, that AMC would probably run and drive down the road daily, honestly. Uh, God, the more I drive these things, the more I want to keep them. And I got to convince myself, you got them running, let them go. That's definitely easier said than done on some of these cars, man. Like I, I really, I really do love the AMC. Just like I love this weird little MGB. Um, the other cars, you know, like the Pacifica and the Saturn, I can sell those all day long. Like I have no attachment to those at all. It's these old forgotten cars that... Uh, I, I, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I really grow an attachment to these old cars, man. But comment your thoughts down below on the AMC. I know everybody would like to see me go further with it, but honestly, how much further will we go with it? It actually does run and drive quite well at 70 miles an hour. I, I was truly surprised about that. Um, aside from putting that black vinyl top back on and getting the fuel system cleaned out, I'm not sure there's really much more content in that car. So my thought is, I brought it home from where it had been dead for 14 years and I got it running and driving again. I'm thrilled with that. I'm happy with that. I am satisfied with that. So if I could get around $4,000 out of it, make a profit and send it down the road to someone else, why not? Before I get out of here, I have a question for you. I and the missus are considering taking a trip to the UK. We haven't decided exactly where in the UK, so that leaves options pretty wide open. Not right now, definitely not right now with the way things are going, but we were curious, for those of you in the UK, where are you in the UK? Wales? I don't know, comment down below if you're in the United Kingdom and where you're at in the United Kingdom, because I think it would be really cool to go out there, possibly do a Copart walk around or two or three. If Copart UK, um, you might, well, never mind. I'll do it. Um, we might be able to reach out to Copart UK and get permission to, to do some recording out there. I think that would be really interesting, really fun. And I would like to meet some of the people um, down there, down there, out there, that way that way it's somewhere it's it's across the ocean you know what i mean so anyway comment down below guys i am going to bounce up out of here i got to get to weird beard like the video if you enjoyed the content thumbs down if you didn't share the video with your friends if you feel it's something your friends and family would be interested in definitely helps if you share the video on facebook twitter uh really helps out a ton subscribe to the channel if not currently subscribed don't forget to follow me on facebook and instagram auto auction rebuilds 
And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I'm going to catch you all very soon in the next one.